everybody, I'm PJ from Princess Craft RV. Today, we're gonna take a look at a Bushwhacker Plus 17 MB. Now, it's economical, it's lightweight, it's spacious inside, I mean comparatively, okay? It's only 18 feet long, but the MB generally stands for a Murphy bed as it does in this one. So it's amazing the amount of walk around room in this 18 foot trailer. And the fact that it's a great price, yeah, that's extra special. It's got some nice features on it though. It is not the cheapest thing out there, but really nice design. So I hope you'll stick with me and take a look. It weighs about 2,500 pounds. Now again, another caution here, because this unit has a little bit heavier tongue weight, probably because the Murphy bed is in the very front of the trailer, tends to add some weight in the front. So if you're looking for something that's under 3,000 pounds, you're gonna also wanna check your vehicle's tongue weight. The tongue weight on this, about 340. So a little higher than maybe your vehicle can tow. Again, 2,500 pounds, about 340 on the tongue, but still a great layout, a great price, and lots of great features. On that note, let's go inside and get started. Stepping in, you'll notice that it's a rear entry trailer. And when you have a rear entry, it generally gives you a little more space in a small trailer. So you might want to look for that if you want to stay, say, under 18 feet. Just the configuration seems to work really well. Now, when you walk in this trailer, you've got the 12 volt refrigerator and the wet bath. Let's start right over here with this refrigerator. Now, I hate to start out in a walkthrough showing you something that maybe feels a bit awkward to me, but I'm always gonna tell you the truth and this is a bit awkward. It is a great refrigerator, it's 12 volt, it's 3.3 cubic foot, so big enough, but it opens the wrong way. Now, I believe that in this refrigerator, there's a way to switch this over to the other side. So be sure and ask your dealer about that because opening up where you can get to it from inside the trailer is really the best design here. But you do have three shelves, you've got a nice crisper drawer at the bottom and space on the door. All of that is gonna be plenty of room in a very small trailer like this. If you wanna add a TV to this trailer, this is where you'll wanna put it. I would just stand it up here, no need to mount it to the wall. That way you can just turn it wherever you need it to go. The connections are right up here for a cable connection or a portable satellite, whichever one you decide to use. So great place for a TV, but if you don't need a TV, anything could go here. You can't say enough about a nice horizontal counter space, right? All right, let's look on the other side because this is your wet bath. Now, one of the things I love about a wet bath is that it gives you the maximum amount of space in a small trailer. Let's talk about height because that's always something that's important in a bathroom. The height on this trailer is six foot one. That's right, it is a smaller, lightweight, compact trailer. When you step into the bathroom, generally the gray tank or the black tank is underneath, so you have to step up just a little bit. Now the way they built this one is really nice because you've got a nice lip here when you use it for a shower. You're not gonna have water coming out because it's not real shallow. But you do lose about five inches in there. So it is five foot eight when you step inside. So that means you may need to sit down to shower. Yeah, you guys know I'm five foot tall, so there's plenty of space in here for me. If you're at a campground that has a toilet and shower room available, you might wanna use that. But in emergencies or dry camping, I don't know. This is very workable. You've got the hot and cold right here, the shower handle up there, and light at the top. Now, these vinyl walls are gonna be really easy to clean, dry off if you need to, and you do have to be sure that the corners are taken care of, but this is a one-piece wall. 
So unless there's something that happens in those corners, you don't have to caulk them. It's all a single wall. Now, last but not least, I always like to show you the door because in a trailer, especially a smaller one, where that door goes is important. This one is a roll-up door, but it's not an accordion. It slides across in the track, doesn't get in anybody's way, has a magnetic catch here on the end. Perfect for a tight space and a nice, very workable wet bath. Now stepping forward, we've got a nice dinette here. I don't think I would call this a four person dinette, definitely a two, but really comfortable for two people. Let's look at the storage up above. It's gonna start right here with the stereo and it is the smaller stereo. It's got the IRV technology so you can get the app on your phone but it's gonna be Bluetooth and at wireless, of course, it's gonna have the AM, FM, everything that you need. Speaker here and a speaker on the other side, and then your storage in between. Now this storage goes all the way through to the other side. So it's a pretty nice space up here. It's about 10 inches deep, so don't let it fool you. You can put a lot of things in here. It might even end up being the pantry if this was my trailer. All right, two lights underneath. You know, I really hate in small trailers if they skimp on the lights. And that's one thing they didn't do in this trailer. You've got two nice lights here, not one. And then you've got good lighting in the center and in the back. That keeps it from feeling really small in here if you're in a dark day or if you need to do some work in here. Now, right behind me here, this first switch is going to be for the 12 volt refrigerator. This 12 volt refrigerator is gonna be extremely efficient, but there may be times when you don't want it to run, you just click that button off, and then you've got the USB ports and the 110 plug right next to that. You know, you may be using this to charge your electronics, charge your phone, anything like that, so it's nice to have that right here. Now, if you work on the road, really great to sit down at the table have those plugs right next to you. So good planning, bushwhacker. All right, now this table is gonna be a one piece molded so you don't have any edging that's gonna come off. It's gonna be lightweight and a single pole. But you know, some single poles are not very sturdy. This one feels really solid. The dinette cushions, they're not really fluffy, but that means that they're gonna last a long time you're not gonna get a divot in it where you usually sit. That's a nice feature. And I think, you know, even though I'm five foot tall, not probably the largest person who'd be in this trailer, I think someone who is taller than me would be very comfortable sitting here, not too close to the table. I mean, that's another problem that I have in some of the smaller trailers. This does go down into a bed. So you take the pole out, just drop this tabletop down onto the rails on both sides. It's 30 inches wide and five foot six inches long. Great for me. I don't know, great for a child as well. All right, so over here you've got one window. It does open so you can get a breeze through here. There is also a fantastic fan in the ceiling. We'll talk about that in just a minute. And a pleated shade which it's black, so you're gonna get almost a full blackout here. I love to be camping and be able to sleep even after the sun comes up, so that's important to me. All right, roll this right back up. It's just a pull down, so it's super easy. There is storage underneath both of these seats. Now, all you have to do is just lift up the cushion and it's got a little finger pull right here, so just lift this up and you've got all the storage that's underneath. So it's very easy to do there. And just put this seat cushion back down and you're ready to go. You know, in a small trailer, you've got to use every bit of storage that's available. You do have a wheel well on the other side, still plenty of space for those things that maybe you don't need all the time. All right, I wanna talk about this fantastic fan because in a trailer like this, you may want to camp somewhere 
maybe not in a campground. Now, if the weather is cooperating, you don't need your air conditioner because you have to plug in at a campground to use that. You can open these windows. You've got two over here and one on the other side. Turn on this power fan and have a really nice breeze in here. You know, you've got some nice tires on this, so getting off the pavement is not a problem. All right, let's talk about the Murphy bed in the back now because it is the best feature, I think, in this design. All right, now it's time for the Murphy bed. Now talk about comfy seating. This is comfy. It feels very cushy. I could stretch out here and relax, I don't know, through at least one rainy day, maybe more. One of the great things about a Murphy bed is how open the space is and you get a second seating area, right? But one of the things you might be concerned about is how hard is it to make my bed every night? Well, let's give that a shot. Now this one's a little different than some. It is kind of a tight space. So I recommend that you don't start out by folding out the sofa. I recommend that you unclip right here and then step over on the other side and fold down the sofa. Now look at this. There is tons of storage space on half of this underneath the sofa. So a great place to put some things that are really relatively easy to get to. Just lift this up, grab it, and set it right back down. But if you're making the bed, you just lay this out and it's a tight walk space through here, which is why I recommend putting this down at the end and then unclipping right here. And then this just lays down flat. Pretty easy to do as long as you do it in that order. And grab this mattress, flip it right over. And you've got a really nice queen size bed. Now, the next thing that I think is important is putting it away. And you can see when I fold it back, there is plenty of space up here to put the extra pillows, anything else that you'd like to store right on top. Maybe the blankets from whoever is sleeping on your dinette. So that's important to me. I don't want to have to make the bed every night. I want to be able to fold it up with all the covers and pillows. Certainly easy to do with this. Next to the bed over here, there's more storage and they have broken this long cabinet up into two spaces. So down below, you've got a space that goes all the way back to that back wall and up to about here. This has got a floor right here and another second area at the top. You know, there isn't a pole in here, but if you wanted to add a little bit of a pole to hang shirts in, you could do that. I think I might be inclined to put a, maybe another shelf in here to stack things. Just depends on what you're going to carry. So a big open space that is probably, oh my gosh, maybe almost three feet deep. And another one up here. Now as the front wall curves, it follows the line of this front wall. So you don't have the full height at the top. But I love that they broke it into two cabinets. All right, let's fold this back up. See how long it takes. This, this back, lift this up, and toss your pillows over the top so they're right there, and clip this back into place. That's pretty easy, right? I don't know. I don't think I would mind making a bed every night. If I wanted a 2,500 pound trailer. Now on the end of this upper cabinet in the kitchen, you will see uh, not only the 110 plug that the air conditioner is plugged into, so you've got an extra plug there on the bottom half of that, but you'll also see the controls for the furnace because this does have a ducted furnace, which is going to keep even heat all around this trailer. Just set it and you're going to stay nice and toasty. Taking a look at the kitchen, You've got all the basics here. Two burner stove, and then over here, a single sink. It does have kind of a shorter faucet, but the sink is about eight inches deep. So you've got some space here. I think you can make most of that work. 
But the thing I notice about this counter is it is pretty low. All right. Now I'm five foot tall. So if you're really tall, this might be uncomfortable for you, but I don't know. I'm guessing if you're too much over six foot, this probably isn't your trailer. Let's take a look up here. A 5,000 BTU air conditioner right up there. Very simple. Just turn it on and off. The thing I love about these types of air conditioners, it is plenty of cooling for a space this size. And if there's ever anything that isn't working on it, super easy and very inexpensive to replace. So don't be afraid of this style of air conditioner. I think it's a great option for a trailer like this. And you've got a nice microwave right here. So really everything you need in a kitchen. Down below, you've got more storage. Let's take a peek. Now we've got the packet of info that comes with this in here and this side, but you've got the full width of this countertop underneath. You do have a few drain pipes to work around right here, but a huge space under there for storage. So uh, a lot to work with there in the kitchen. Right underneath is going to be the things that you recognize. It's going to be the converter right here. And of course, in the front, you've got breakers and fuses. And over here, the carbon monoxide and LP detector. So everything right here, a little more storage over here. Remember, if you need more pantry space, I don't know. It's a very workable kitchen, I think. Now, the last thing I want to talk about here is the monitor panel over here on the left. Water pump, water heater, and the it is a gas electric. So you have two water heater switches right here. When you push these buttons, it's going to tell you how much power your battery has and your fresh gray and black tank. Now, this has an extraordinary size of a fresh gray and black tank for a trailer that's only 18 foot. This has 18 gallons of fresh water, 23 gray and 23 black. So if you need something small and lightweight, you'll want to get off the pavement and you've got to have enough holding tank. I don't know. I'm impressed with the tank sizes on this trailer. Over here, just another 110 plug. You may have some appliances, you know, I'll have a coffee pot. So perfect for me. All right. That completes the inside tour, but we're going to go outside. So let's see all the extra things that are outside. Stepping out, I want to point out the steps on this. I love these fold in steps. These are aluminum. Um, there are several different brands, um, but this one, it, they're just so easy. They go inside, they clip right into place, and you're done. It's so sturdy, it's adjustable. You can adjust the feet if you're on uneven terrain. Just doesn't get any easier than that. And you have a nice screen door and frosted glass on the top. Give that another push. Really, a nice setup for a rear entry. All right, let's move around to this side. Now, right here, you're plug in at the campsite. Of course, your 30 amp cord, the exterior hot and cold shower and the city water connection. If you're connecting to the hydrant at the campsite. Now down below, you will see you've got two low point drains. Let me lift that up so you can see them. And then back way under there is going to be your sewer connection. You've got the black pole on the right hand side. And then the gray tank pole is kind of underneath. You'll have to look under just a bit to grab that. Once you figure out exactly where that is, you'll get the hang of it. So everything is very compact right here. Now next to this 30 amp plug is going to be a plug that is for your solar panel. If you have a portable solar panel, again, you want to maybe get away from the campsites that is going to plug in right there, charge your battery. I really like having the portable solar panels because I'm in Texas. I really love to park in the shade or wherever it makes sense for me to be next to my camper. But I want to have that portable solar panel out in the sun facing whatever direction gets the most sun. So anyway, 
One of my favorite things is having those plugs on these smaller trailers. This is the fill for that 18 gallon fresh water tank and the furnace right here. As a side note, I always recommend the bug screens on the outside of the furnaces. You know, mud daubers especially, they can smell propane and they love to get in there and make a nest. It's a real problem when you go to use it. There is a fresh water drain underneath, so if you want to drain your fresh water tank, easy to do right there. Let's look at some storage in here. Open this up. Now, what you're seeing in here is the electrical cord that comes with it and a spray port coil from the other side and uh, another cord that goes with the outside kitchen that I'm going to show you in just a minute. But this is a really nice storage space. Again, probably two and a half, almost three feet deep and a really good space to carry all that extra gear. All right, moving around to the front. It's a good time to mention that this trailer has a one piece roof. You've got a rock guard at the bottom, then the fiberglass starts right here and goes all the way around the top and all the way to the back of the trailer. You don't have any TPO, any rubber roof, so it's very solid. It's gonna withstand driving underneath those branches, having, you know, maybe those acorns or maybe even some small things fall on top of it. It's very durable, really nice build. You have a 20 pound propane tank here and the space right behind it is where the battery will go. It does come with the standard crank front. You know, a lot of people don't know that the electric jacks are very easy to upgrade. So if you wanted that electric jack, just ask your dealer. And coming back around, this looks like another compartment but amazing on a trailer this small and at this price. I know I haven't mentioned a price. It's very difficult to do because it changes all across the board and across the country. But you know, if you're looking for something that's 20 grand or less, that's gonna be in this range right here. So this is a very nice kitchen setup. Pull this out and you have this suburban griddle right here, and you've got a little extra space on this side on the countertop, so that's really nice. But then you've got, let me get it pulled out here. You have right next to that a little sink that'll be right next to this griddle. So you've got the sink, the griddle there, and a little storage over here for your food or your prep. Very nice setup, don't you think, in case you wanna cook outside? It's unusual to have a trailer this size and this price range having all those features. So, very easy to put back together here. Just fold that in and these little clips, will get it all closed up. Roll it right back in and you are ready to travel. Now right here is that, uh, remember that coiled hose, that clips in right here. So you not only have that hot and cold outside shower on the other side, but you have a spray port over here as well. It's nice to have next to the place where you're cooking. You can also hook up a grill if you wanted to do that because you've got that gas port right here. If you carry your own barbecue grill and that's what you really like to cook on, set that up as well. You're ready to go right here. Now, I want to point out the off-road tires as well. You've got some really nice uh, tires here, uh, the aluminum rims, nice upgrade. On the far end, you've got a 110 plug. You've also got the water heater back here. Remember that gas electric water heater? So all in all, you have almost everything that these larger trailers have right here on this camper. So if you're looking for something lightweight, maybe this works for you. Maybe that Murphy bed, eh, even if you weren't thinking that was your favorite, maybe this will convince you that you could do it. 2,500 pounds, easy to tow, and a great price. 
Thanks for watching, you guys. I always love showing you new trailers, and we put new things out every week. So if you haven't subscribed, you might want to do that. I'm PJ with Princess Craft RV. I'll see you next time.